The introduction of automated teller machines, ATM, in Nigeria is no doubt a welcome development in Nigeria's banking sector. This development is, however, not without its attendant challenges. And I'm now being joined in this studio by Dr. Emeka Okengu, a development economist who is here uh, to, of course, uh, have a chat with me on the issue of ATM. Um, you are welcome to the program, um, Doctor. Thank you. Okay, first of all, what is your reaction to what you have seen in the preceding reports, the reports you've watched so far? Well, my reaction is that we're, we're, not, we're not taking it holistically because uh, the ATM is supposed to be a very uh, minute part of the e-commerce system that we're trying to introduce. So in trying to now, you know, look at it, I think we should be able to take a look at the whole infrastructure, ICT infrastructure for, you know, introducing the e-commerce structure because that's actually where the ATM is supposed to be gravitating towards. So for me, you know, the ATM, yes, I mean, it's, it's the, the, all the answers are in the questions. Uh, I don't want us to talk about ATM cards. Can we talk about ATM technologies? And in talking about ATM technologies, you must be able to now take a total look at what they call interoperability and systems integration. Okay, what does this mean? How do we have that ICT infrastructure that now, you know, allows for what you call network integration? Now, first and foremost, where are these machines coming from? Do we have the human capacity and human capital, you know, to be able to now do what it is that needs to be done? program these machines to a point where they can begin to now do the things that you want them to do. Because this is supposed to be a command and control structure. That's one. But most importantly, do we also have what you call the backup, the power? Because the moment you're talking about this electronics, the only way you can turn those things on or off and get them to operate is that there is adequate and sustainable power. Because the ATM, you know, why it's called anytime money, is supposed to be a 24-7 system. So this, the, we're talking about people who are losing their cards, you know, to machines and uh, losing money and losing all that. You know, uh, probably that people who live in town. What about when you when you travel over the over the weekend to a place you don't know and your card gets stuck into that machine and then you get into the main bank and they say to you, even if you had an account here with us, you can't get your card because somebody needs to come and open the ATM machine to give it to you. So you also now have the problem of logistics. So in discussing the ATM or what you call, what, what people now term the ATM fraud, we should be able to take a holistic look at the you know, operational structures of the Okay, ATM. now taking a look at the operational uh, aspect of it is one. Two is the fact that it's meant to serve people. Now nobody cares to know, I mean, the, what is put together in that machine. Their business is to get the money out. Now it was meant to facilitate banking transactions. Uh, now, it's beginning to be more difficult. And what would you be telling an ordinary Nigerian who has money in the bank, he has an ATM introduced, and he puts his slots, a card in, it doesn't come out, he withdraws his money, he doesn't have the money. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying to you. You see, when, uh, let, me, let, me, let me give you a little story. You see, when the Israelites wanted a king, what did God tell them? Are you ready to have a king? And they said, yes, we want to look like every other nation in the world. And he gave them soul that led them to disaster. So, you see, when you want to start copying to say, okay, Nigeria, is people are using this in London, uh, and, and somebody brings it in here and says, okay, now it makes, it makes it easy for you to carry a million naira in your pocket and you walk around. Have you been able to look at the back ends? In, in looking at the Nigerians who are losing money, okay, those Nigerians who are losing money must also now be conscious. Some guy said he went to court and got money. He's lucky. Because it, the, the, the conditions of issuing an ATM card to you is that the bank gives you a pin and says to you, keep this pin. This pin, the moment you punch it in, you know, the pin allows you to now command the machine to give you money. So until you begin to now look at, the, like I keep insisting, on the ICT infrastructure, on the interoperability and the network integration of all, because it's not only the banks that own ATMs. Remember, it's not every ATM that is owned by the banks. Supermarkets own ATMs. You know, private uh, 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 ICT companies own NTNs. So what you're saying is that what's the legal framework that has put this thing into perspective? Okay, yes, like you said, people want, you know, return for service. But when these services are not, you know, being met, what is also the legal framework that now acts, you know, you know makes them now demand, 
you know, for their rights that have been wronged, you know, to, to how many people go to court and get this money? Are you saying we're not ripe for ATM services? I am saying that we do not, we have not been able to develop the adequate and proper infrastructure, what you call back-end infrastructure to do e-commerce. If you, if you limit it at ATM, the worst one that is coming is e-commerce. The, e the ATM is, 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 is by choice. The moment you now need to start trading using your card, that is when you're going to see the one that is disaster. The ATM right now, I mean, you, you have a choice to use it or not to use it. But the moment, do you have the markets? Do you have the products? Do you have the systems? Do you have the infrastructure? Do you have the legal framework? The answer is a loud no. Can we get it? That now, should be the challenge. Now the ATM is in place and Nigerians are using it. But let's, let me take it to this question. We have heard of card jamming, yes. card stealing, yes. and graph surfing, all methods about which people get defrauded. Yes. But, uh, you know, it, it's really strange when your account is debited, uh, when your card is in your possession, and so because banks, uh, bank operators uh, are perpetrating this card. Again, people believe that. It, 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 it necessarily do not have to be the bank operators. Truly, they are, they are, they are systems, they are, they are machines that can actually solve your account. What these machines do is that they copy, you know, whatever information you have onto that card, and then they're able to use it to now go and clone another card. Usually, it's not even very, very rampant with NTM cards. It's more you, you rampant with cards that you can be able to now enter, oper 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 operate, you know, use it in, in making procurements and all that. But having said that, I'm also not exonerating the banks. I'm saying that what we should do is to be able to now form what you can call security layers. And these security layers can only be driven by our indigenizing okay, our own technologies on whatever it is we get. First and foremost, these machines, where do they come from? Has anybody ever bothered to find out? Are we buying from a source or are we buying from multiple suppliers? That's one. Who are the system integrators? What networks are we using? Let's even look at our, let's look at our, our telecoms. Because they are very critical when you hear about network failure. Because what happens most of the time is that when you go into that, put your card into that system, and everything is not right, there's no power, there's no network, one thing goes wrong, what the now machine does is that the machine shuts down. That's how your card is grabbed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, is there, is there, is there anything you can put onto that machine that begins to beep to show something is wrong with this machine, you know, don't use? Because some people now blindly, it's only when even, you, you, if you're walking into a bank, 80% of the times you only get to know that those machines are not, are not, are not working when the bank uh, guards tell you, guy, that one is not working. Because you go there, everything you're supposed to see in front of a machine is showing. You put in your card, it eats it, it, it. So I think the basic problem, Kiria, my brother, is that we do things in this country without thinking them true. The moment you are able to think things through and then be able to now stop blaming the banks alone, let us also blame the Ministry of Power. Everybody talks about megawatts, kilowatt hours. Let us also blame the Ministry of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, I ICT, the telecoms people. Let's be able to now blame all the people we should be able to blame to say, please come and tell us how you've been able to now position policies or programs, okay, that now make these things difficult not to operate well. I now get to a point when you talked about, uh, you know, holistic, you know, look at, at, at this problem. Yes. It's not just slotting no. and making money. No. There are other things to Yes. Make. Okay, let me take you here. Um, uh, a, a chip was later introduced, you know, to the ATM cards, yes. you know, as a way of uh, securing them. Yes. But uh, the scam has gone unabated. You know, the, the chip was supposed to, like, have uh, some certain of control okay. in, in terms of the transaction you know, in the machine. Yes. So what's your take on that? Kian, the President of America says to you that the, that, the, that the cyber war that they're getting is coming from military formations in China. That's what they call virus. So what are we talking about? Where are you? The people who gave you these things are 10 miles ahead of you. Do we even have the proper and adequate human capital to be able to even understand the operations of these machines? And no one virus uh, you know. Do you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Do we, have, do we have it? I mean, if you go to a bank now, they say the ICT person is coming. What does he know about ICT? Probably has some Microsoft certification or something. You go to the Ministry of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, ICT or whatever it is they're called. What kind of human capital do we have there? What kind of programs do they generate? What kind of softwares are they developing? The softwares we're using to run these ATMs, who gives them to us? It is like a man who's giving you poison and is giving you the antidote. 
The same person who gave you that software can also now simply give, get, get something that can never to spoil it or break into it. So when you're talking about you know these systems, I think that blaming the people who, who have bought it to be able to make the operations easier might not be very fair. I'm not trying to say she is on the them, but I'm saying that those who should be able to now make certain that these machines that are being brought into this country meet what you call our minimum standards, if you have any. And what are these minimum standards? First and foremost, they must be integrated to a common pool so that when things like this begin to happen, there is a place you can go and start looking at this data and start analyzing them or how they went wrong. Do we have that database? Do we have any system that can be able to capture that data? That's one. Are we able to now interoperate? That's what they call interoperability. How are these networks connected? There was a fight between the telecom companies before they could even allow people access to now start making you know, calls. And that's why you kept having dropped calls. What's the difference? Same thing. Are they not the same ones that are also giving these banks you know, uh, net, uh, internet access? All right. You already raised a number of issues here. Yeah. So are you saying that we're not ripe to make use of ATM? Or are you saying that we, we didn't do our homework well before we got into it? I am saying that we should think the e-commerce system through. Because like I said to you, ATM is a very inconsequential aspect of it. Because the bigger one is that the central bank is saying that we are going cashless. Cashless is not ATM. That's the truth. Cashless is not cashless goes beyond the ATM. So when the big boys are saying to you very soon, we're going to try it in Lagos, or we're going to try it in uh, Oguna, no my and all that, that's where the issues are coming from. It is the e-commerce that are we ready? Do we understand it? Do we have what it takes? Have we been able to get the what you call the mind map to be able to engage into what it is we are running? Yeah. I really want to thank you because uh, you have really taken this to another level. Um, the, I want to appreciate you, your time and your contribution to this program. And also reminds us here yeah, that uh, we were talking about communication and all of that, that we do have uh, a communication satellite in this country, uh, which of course I'm not sure is uh, 100% you know, being put into use because uh, that would have also necess- um, you know, assisted some of these uh, networking and stuff I like wish, that. I wish you had time, Kira. But, but I, I, at this point, uh, uh, Dr. Mecca Okengu, yes. thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Uh, we'll, thank you. Glad, we'll be glad to have you some thank other you. time is my on this platform. Thank, thank you. you indeed.